It's not a secret that the turret of T-14 is not that well armored. In fact, it seems like it can't take any kind of APVSDS projectile, but can only offer protection against autocannon fire. Of course, when you hear that, the first thing that comes to your mind is, hey, that doesn't sound really good, sure that T-14 has no crew in the turret, so no one will actually die, but you can kill the gun and firing mechanism, so the tank becomes useless, so what's the point? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly why it is actually a pretty darn good idea to do that. I know it sounds crazy right now, but stick around and you will learn why. Let's first get something straight. This, this is not the turret. This is the turret. This is the protective screen designed to protect some electronics, change the silhouette of the tank and reduce the radar and thermal signature. So the turret isn't actually all that big to begin with. You can immediately see that this site takes a big portion of the frontal area, so this is the only area that actually has something behind it, and the area with some armor protection, although minor. It is still protected, and the optics and electronics are just as big as on any other tank. Now let's get on the obvious things. T-14 is protected with Afghani attacker protection system, which can neutralize all incoming heat projectiles, including ATGMs. And since those projectiles are the most common threat to tanks, T-14's turret is basically fully protected against those. Armor or no armor, no heat projectile is penetrating that turret. Now what about APFSDS projectiles? Well, the Afghanit is said to be able to intercept APFSDS projectiles, but there is still a problem. While there is very high chance that it is actually able to do so, since Ukrainians have released the footage of their APS Zaston intercepting APS the actual projectile on trials, and both Zaston and Afghanit work on similar principle. Now the problem is that it can't possibly fully stop one, it can only degrade the penetration by changing the impact angle. While that is extremely useful when the projectile is impacting the hull, it is still a problem for the low protection of the turret. Now here's the catch. Literally every tank that exists has the same problem. This is not a problem only T-14 is facing. Every tank has the area around the gun called the gun mantlet, which has arm protection. Most, if not all tanks, have far lower protection on the mantlet than on the turret cheeks. Mainly because if the projectile impacts the mantlet, gun and the gun breech will serve as a good addition to protection. While tank will survive, the gun and the firing mechanism would need to be repaired. Sounds familiar? In addition, even hitting the turret cheeks near the gun has very high risk of damaging or neutralizing the gun, whether it be from the sheer impact that could produce shrapnel or the internal damage. But Red Abrams has 900mm against TP, nothing can penetrate that. Now, that is a major misunderstanding. While tanks do have high armor ratings on the turret cheeks, people tend to forget that it is composite armor, which means that, when struck, projectile will go in. It will go in no matter what you do. How deep it goes is the problem you will have to think about, but it is guaranteed to enter. So once it enters, it will produce internal damage. So even if it enters the turret cheek near the gun, there is a possibility that the gun will get damaged. For example, there has been a picture of this anti 2 b 3 tank that got knocked out in Ukraine. The projectiles struck the area around the mantlet, which disabled the gun, and the crew decided to bail the tank since they could not return fire. So, you see. T-14's weakness is actually every other tank's weakness. Having low armor protection grants T-14 far lower weight, light turret, which means the center of the mass will be closer to the ground. And there is no one to protect except the gun bridge, so there is no point of having armored turret, because even if they made heavily armored turret, the gun would almost definitely get disabled when the turret is struck, because, as I already said, composite armor means the projectile will still be able to damage the gun. And don't forget that the tank is protected with Afghani active protection system, which means only other tanks may be able to damage the turret of T-14, and tank on tank battles are pretty rare nowadays. So that concludes it, thanks for watching. I would really appreciate if you could support me on Patreon, link is in the description, if not, you're always welcome to join my Discord server, link is also in the description. I will see you all in the next video, have a nice day.